In the year 1120, King Henry I was at the peak of his power. He had taken control of both England and Normandy, having defeated and imprisoned his brother Robert. Henry was famous for being an intelligent man. He had proved to be an effective ruler with a stable kingdom. Over 20 years, he had built up a system of government that worked. Henry I was the fourth son of William the Conqueror. Henry is said to have had at least 26 children, but only two of them, his daughter Matilda and his son William, were legitimate and biologically from his wife Matilda, who had died in 1118. The rest of his children were born to his mistresses. Henry treated his illegitimate sons and daughters very well and gave them important positions in his government. His only legitimate son, William, was 17 in 1120 and heir to the throne. William was said to have had a very pampered childhood. A year earlier, William had been married to a young French girl who was reportedly only eight years old, solely for strengthening government ties between two powers. In November of 1120, King Henry and some of his children, including William, were in Barfleur, Normandy, preparing to return to England by ship. They were traveling with many knights, lords, and ladies. They were returning from a trip to France, during which William paid homage to King Louis VI, of France and was made Duke of Normandy. So William was in very good spirits. A fleet was assembled at the port of Barfleur, and on November 25th, the winds became right to make the trip. It was then that a man named Thomas Fitzstephen approached the king, offering his vessel as royal service. Thomas's ship, called the White Ship, when translated from French to English, was famous across the Channel coast for its elegant beauty and speed. Thomas added that his grandfather had served Henry's father, William the Conqueror, when he invaded England back in 1066. Now Thomas wanted to gain a similar honor with his sleek and fast ship. Henry replied that he already had a fine ship for himself, but he would entrust Thomas with his children that he loved dearly. William and his entourage were reportedly very excited to ride on such a nice vessel. As the king set sail, his son William and the other nobility began to board the white ship. Among those who got on the ship were two of William's half-siblings, Richard and yet another Matilda, though some sources say his half-sister's name was Margaret or Marie. Close to 300 people ended up on board. Thomas Fitzstephen's white ship included 50 crew who manned the oars. Before the ship left, William bought some barrels of wine to share, and soon wine was being handed out freely, with the ship passengers and crew indulging themselves. At this point, a few people decided to get off the boat. This included Stephen of Blois, who said he was too ill to make the trip. At some point, priests came with other ministers carrying holy water to bless the ship. The ship's drunk occupants laughed and drove them away with abuse. It is important to note that at this time in history, people didn't know much about the sea. They didn't know what was under the waves. They just knew it was full of terrifying things. Most people couldn't swim, and drowning was considered the most painful way to die. One way of countering this was said to be by getting God's blessing before you sailed, and it was common, with important ships, for monks or priests to come and bless it. With the priests shooed away, William and the other rowdy passengers called upon the ship's captain, Thomas, to depart and see if the ship was fast enough to catch up with King Henry's boat. They wanted to see if they could reach England first. Thomas, probably also quite drunk, happily welcomed the challenge. The ship left, likely a little before midnight. The crew emphasized speed over care as they rushed out of Barfleur. The waters were calm, but it was a very dark night. 
they paid little attention to the dangerous rocks near the coast. Thomas reportedly dropped the mainsail too soon, before he was clear of the rocky coast. Then the confused and drunk helmsman miscalculated and steered the ship into danger. The ship struck a submerged rock and began to sink into the freezing water. Panic ensued as those aboard began to cascade into the water. Some bodyguards kept their heads to ensure that William found his way onto a small lifeboat, the only lifeboat on the ship. As the boat was rowing to safety, William heard a shout coming from his half-sister. She pleaded with her brother to turn back and save her, while also apparently insulting him for being so despicable as to leave her to drown. William ordered his men to steer the lifeboat back to the stricken ship in order to retrieve her. He managed to grab his half-sister. However, those struggling for life in the water threw their arms up over the sides of the small boat and tried to climb aboard. There were so many that their weight took the lifeboat down, along with William. People on the shore, and even in Henry's own boat, could hear the sounds of people screaming, but they did not know where it was coming from. There were two people left hanging onto the mast of the white ship, or clinging to the rock, depending on the source. A young noble, who, depending on the source, may have been named Geoffrey, and a butcher from Rouen named Barold. Barold was not even supposed to be on the vessel. He had come aboard in the hope of collecting debts owed to him by the noblemen, only to be trapped on board as the ship sailed. At one point, Thomas, the ship's captain, came to the surface and said to the pair, The king's son, what has become of him? When they told the captain of the prince's fate, Thomas replied, It is vain for me to go on living, before slipping back into the sea, never to be seen again. During the night, Geoffrey could not hang on any longer. He went into the water, leaving only Barold alive. A significant proportion of the English royal household and aristocracy died that night. Most of the people on board likely died very quickly due to the cold water, especially as they were wearing heavy clothes to counter the cold of a November night. The sole survivor, Barold, was found by fishermen the following morning, barely alive. Over the next few days, a few bodies found their way ashore, but William was never found. Back in England, rumors spread of the disaster, but no one wanted to tell the king, as he adored his children, but was also known to be utterly ruthless. Finally, a young boy was sent to Henry to reveal what had happened. The king was overcome and wept for his children and others who had died. It is said that after hearing the news, the king never smiled again. Henry reigned for another 15 years and remarried. The union produced no children, and he was left with his only surviving legitimate child, Matilda, from his first marriage. Even though no woman had ever ruled England, in time, Henry chose Matilda as heir and forced the lower members of the nobility to swear an oath accepting her future claim on the throne. They did so unwillingly. Matilda had the official title of Empress after marrying the Holy Roman Emperor Henry V. Then the Emperor died and Matilda went back to her father. He persuaded her to marry a much younger man, Geoffrey, who was the son of the Count of Anjou. Geoffrey was seen as a rival and widely disliked in England. By the time Henry died, Matilda had some sons, the eldest one called Henry. And some say that King Henry I was really trying to use Matilda in order to pass on the throne to his grandson but he couldn't do that without having her made queen. However, as soon as King Henry I died, his nephew, Stephen of Blois, who was one of those who had gotten off the white ship in Barfleur, usurped Matilda and became King of England in 1135. 
Some sources say that Stephen turned out to be an indecisive and weak leader. This began the bitter civil war known as the Anarchy, and all of Henry the First's good work as king was destroyed due to endless fighting. Matilda invaded England in 1139 with the backing of Welsh and Scottish nobles in an attempt to claim the crown. At the same time, Matilda's husband Geoffrey attacked Stephen's holdings in Normandy. The war dragged on until 1153, when a treaty was signed declaring that Stephen could retain the throne until his death, on condition that the crown be passed to Matilda's son Henry. And when Stephen died the next year, that's exactly what happened. Henry II became king. The sinking of the White Ship was perhaps the worst maritime disaster of the Middle Ages. One legend holds that the ship was doomed because priests were not allowed to board it and bless it with holy water in the customary fashion. Some people believe the sinking of the White Ship was not a tragic accident, but a case of mass murder. However, there is not enough evidence to prove that it was anything more than an accident initiated by a ship full of intoxicated people. Ultimately, the White Ship disaster is a tragic example of how one devastating event can change the course of history.